Hello again everybody and welcome back to the Amazon. My name is Will and this is An Ecologist Plays. Now last time we ended off with our stews that we made here. So we've got a nice bit of food for ourselves here. We hunted a bit, we had the bow, we made the arrows and we've got our coconut bowls out here as well. Now it's been two weeks so it's been a while since I last played this. And that's because I've had a bit of an accident in that I fractured my tibia and fibula in my left leg and dislocated my kneecap. All kinds of bad things happened uh, because I tripped over a beer bottle that was in long grass while I was lecturing. So I ran into some long grass to get a plant sample for my students and in the process tripped over a beer bottle and well, here we are. So I'm not supposed to be walking for six weeks, which makes it very difficult. I've got crutches, but overall, it's been a battle because this is now the closest I can actually get to nature. I can't go outside really to go and be in the garden and go and walk in nature because, you know, it's a bit challenging to go walk around with crutches out in nature. So for now, this is the closest I'm going to get to that. So on that note, today in Green Hell, we are going to be looking at, well, medicine that we can use in this game. Uh, things that we can use as bandages, and stuff like that. How you would also go about doing that in real life. Now, first of all, it is now uh, still night time in the game. It's well, 20 to 11. Here we are I'm currently recording. It is now 20 to 5 in the morning. We're going to take a quick nap over here and well, see what happens when we wake up. Okay, it is now just after sunrise, a quarter past five. Just taking a quick peek outside our uh, cave over here just checking for any signs of danger so let's just head into our cave over here drink our soup that we've still got left from last night and what we'll do then is we'll take the ash and we'll take the charcoal those are going to be extremely important for us and we'll take our coconut bowls as well let's take some obsidian stone because that's also going to be useful later for tool making and things like that We've got some bones, our weight is quite all right. Very important to do proper weight management in your backpack because you don't want to be carrying around you know, equipment that is too heavy. Now, one thing one must always keep track of is where you are and where you have been, and also, of course, where you are going. Now, we started out at 21 South 39 West. Hello, tape here. 21 South uh, 39 West, made a little note of that. And we are currently at 24 south, 40 west. So we went three clicks uh, south, one click west. So when we went south, south, west. And if you look at where we came from, that was basically from that direction. We went down, we got to this cave. Now we want to follow the water. Uh, if you are in a survival situation, water is going to lead you to humans because humans are generally found around water sources. So if we can find water we can find possibly civilization always keeping an eye out in the denser vegetation don't want to like that step on something that's going to bite you there's a rattling rattlesnake here somewhere where are you you bugger oh okay i know he is here somewhere i know there's a coconut over there that's what i was trying to get to Okay, I'm not even going to go into that denser vegetation then because there is a rattlesnake there. And unless I can see him, I am not going to go in there. And then I proceed to go in there. Ah, there he is. Okay, I can see the rattlesnake. There he is. That's going to be a bit of meat for us. So I'm just going to quickly shoot him from a distance. Now, snake meat would be a relatively good source of protein. Obviously, you just cut off the head and you use the remainder of the body. It's not a lot of meat though. It is a very, very small amount of meat, but in a survival situation, you can use that. And then we have another parrot over here. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost some of our tapir meat. We're just going to harvest that for the maggots to use later. Interestingly enough, in some areas, People have you. I've put fresh meat, and I believe it was in Egypt, amongst other places. They put fresh meat on a wound. If you were to get a wound, they would put fresh meat on there, and then wrap that around in a bandage, or wrap a bandage around that. 
Uh, but I still, you know, wouldn't go around putting fresh meat on a wound. That just sounds like a recipe for disaster, or at least for diseases. If there's a disease that can spread from animals to humans, then, well, maybe you can get it that way. Uh, we have enough arrows, so we're not going to bother about the the uh, macaw up there. We are going to eat this mushroom here. That's going to give us some energy. Always important to keep your energy levels topped up. And we're going to keep following this stream, but always keeping an eye out because predators will also very often hunt along your river courses or ambush a prey along river courses. And well, we're not at the river yet, but we could, we should get there along this way, or this should lead us there. And also, of course, because you, we could have, I think there's a spider here somewhere, or because you could have humans in this game as well, the the natives, which can be in this game very dangerous, they're not friendly. We also should listen out to hear if we can actually hear them calling or you know screaming at us. So in terms of this game, we do need to keep track of four vitals again: water, fats, protein, and carbohydrates. Uh, we are pretty much topped up on everything, and we are just going to top up the necessary things as we go along. Let's see which direction are we going now so we are going we are 20 degrees south 40 degrees west so we have gone four, to, four north we are almost basically back at where we started <laughs> uh, so we've been looping around again this is where it's useful to keep track and to make a little draw a little map of where you are going and where you have gone but we are basically following this water course that is what we are currently doing. Here is a little raffia palm nut, which is going to be a useful source of protein, either by eating it or potentially planting it later. So we're going to keep that. If we set up a more permanent base, we want to be able to grow some things so that we can actually then survive indefinitely. Best way to do that, cultivate a lot of plants. So we are hopefully going to do that soon. I'm also keeping an eye out for things that will be useful to use as bandages. So just keeping an eye out for that. And a nice pool of water over here as well. So we've looped around this mountainside. And we had a cave on the, on the other side of this little uh, ridge over here. We've looped around and now we found a little pool of water. Which would also be a nice place to set up camp. If you've got a nice source of water potentially to use, that's going to be extremely useful. However, this isn't quite what we are after. So we want a little bit more water, bigger water. We want a river. So we are going to head straight north. And as I mentioned previously in one of the other episodes in the Let's Play, what you would do is you would select a tree or two and head straight in that direction. And when you get to that tree, you then realign yourself so that you keep on going in the direction that you want to go and you select a new tree to walk towards. So we are going to walk, to walk towards that big tree over there. That's going to be our direction that we're going to be heading. Okay, I hear peccaries. I see peccaries. And there's another peccary right here. Oh, okay. Just need some rope as well. So we got the lianas. And we also have a very useful, two useful plants in close, close proximity to one another. The first one, and I can see a rattlesnake way off in the distance over there. Well, less camouflage than they would be in real life. In any case, we are first going to harvest this plant over here, known as the grass palm or molinaria. Now, molinaria is useful because it has got these broad leaves that you can use, and you can use this to then make your basic bandages. Now, as just a bandage, that's going to be great. Any or most broad-leaved plants could work as bandages, preferably soft and a little bit absorbent. Uh, banana leaves, yes, would be great as a dressing, However, they are not as absorbent, so anything that oozes out, or any blood that oozes out of your wound will just kind of get stuck to your skin. And it's not going to actually soak into what you are using as a bandage or as gauze. So you want something that's a little bit more absorbent, and the molinaria there could be quite useful for that. You also have mullion, which is a 
herb, uh, very weird spelling. It's also known as the toilet paper herb because you can use it as, well, that. It's not what I'm cutting here. I'm actually cutting tobacco leaves over here. But the tobacco leaves here, according to the game at least, can be used to make bandages that are useful against venom, against snake bites and things like that. Let's make tobacco leaf dressings like that. Okay, so tobacco leaf Tobacco leaf dressings very useful to have because if we are stung by a scorpion or bitten by a spider or a snake we can at least address the venom wound. Now, of course there would be certain plants that you could use for that. Not actually sure whether tobacco is a plant to be used in terms of or for that at least but there will be plants that you can use not necessarily anti-venom uh, but to, in order to prevent extra additional issues you could use some plants. With a venom wound, you do want to treat your symptoms. You don't want to, very importantly, you don't want to suck out the venom. That's an old wives tale that if you are bitten by something like a snake or a scorpion, you must suck out the venom. That's just unhygienic. And for, two, for many reasons, one thing is you are going to suck out very little venom because as soon as the venom is injected, it is actually going to get pumped through your body, which is not, you know, you sucking a little bit of the wound is just going to suck. It's not going to be very useful at all. And then secondly, you can have a little wound inside your mouth and now you're just sucking the venom and you, if, if you do manage to suck out a bit of venom and you're just sucking it into that wound in your mouth. And thirdly, human mouths are extremely dirty, the very, very unhygienic. And so you sucking at your wound there is just going to... Well, I heard humans. But you sucking at your wound there is just going to you know, put all kinds of bacteria and things in your wound, which is going to have the exact opposite uh, effect of what you actually want. You want your wound as um, disinfected as possible and as hygienic as possible, and now you just go around sucking at the wound, uh, which is not what you want. Okay, so we have collected a few things. We've collected the tobacco, we've collected molinaria, great stuff. This plant over here, I think is more of an edible plant. Let's see if we do cut it, but I'm pretty sure this is going to give us a tuber that we can eat. Oh, I managed to cut it. It has given us a small leaf pile. Wonderful. And a massive tuber. So, this massive bulb we can eat or cook up as it is, or we can harvest it to make little smaller bulbs. Snake. There's a snake. Hello, Mr. Rattle. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. I'm just going to leave you. I'm not going to harm you now. Um, we want to head north, so we still want to head in that direction. Just going to head up over here. I forgot which tree we were heading to, got sidetracked by with plants and stuff like that. Which is useful to get sidetracked by, but still not the best. Okay, but let's just have a quick squiz where we are. Oh, okay, we've run out of land. Go to. Okay. So we are about as far north as we can get, it seems. Um, great, so we'll make a note of that, 18 south, 38 west. And then of course, we should also keep an eye on our bodies because we appear to have leeches on us, which is not great. There we go, especially in tropical areas. I know my dad and my sister went to Borneo a few years ago and they said Yeesh, the leeches were on them constantly so you'll just be walking around and the next thing you know you have a whole bunch of leeches all over your body and not sure that's something you want i don't think that really 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 isn't something you want okay so we've run out of land to the north i think now let us head more to the west so you kind of map out where you are going in this by doing this okay always again keeping an eye out because we now know that there is somewhere there is a rattlesnake over there that we have encountered so we're just going to avoid that general area and we are going to harvest another useful plant the plantain lily and in this case the plantain lily can be used as an antihistamine so to prevent uh, allergic reactions basically or reduce al allergic reactions so we are going to use that and combine that with a leaf bandage and get a lily dressing so now we've got something against uh, anti well, against allergic reactions, we've got a dressing against venom wounds, and we've got a basic 
dressing. So we are relatively sorted in terms of the things we need to survive, at least as dressings. Now, what we do need is a more permanent uh, spider. Not a more permanent spider, but there he is. Goliath bird eating spider right over there. I'm just going to leave you. They are useful in this game because you can make a spider ash. We are now too heavy to keep on walking, so let's just eat some bananas. But as I was saying, the spider is useful to use as uh, to make spider ash and then to put that on a serious wound. Okay, there's another armadillo. We're just going to ignore him. And where you find armadillos, good chance you're going to find ants nests as well. Now, the ants nest may be a good way for us to again look at something else that can be useful in terms of medication and that's actually big soldier ants so we're just going to take some ants from here believe it or not in real life in west africa for example they the tribes they have used ants as a way of stitching up major lacerations so big wounds where you would grab these especially termites actually work a little bit better than ants because ants very often sting whereas termites just tend to bite and so what you'll and they, or they can spray some things as well as any of you have seen Ants, uh, the Ants uh, movie, or well, yeah, Ants the movie, you know, uh, you'll remember the attack on the termite colony, spraying some acids and all kinds of compounds on the ants. Now, the termites, what you would do is if you have got a big wound and you want to heal that, you grab, especially the soldiers with their big jaws, you grab them, hold them next to your wound, and then by doing that, you they grab onto your skin and they close it and then you break off the body and the head will then not release your wound it will hold on to your wound and just you know stay like that which is actually quite marvelous if you want to close up a wound i just want to keep an eye out because i know previously when i was in the game here i was attacked by people but we are seem to be in the clear so let's just have a look at this thing here a snare trap now of course if you are in any given area and you want a source of meat you would use things like traps and in this case it's a relatively simple design you've got your two sticks on the side there and this here is in a very very poor place but i'll talk about that in a moment now what you will have is you need a way in order to activate a trap and you need a way to catch the animal that activates the trap and in this case you've got big logs that's there to secure the trap so that when you have caught something it doesn't run away instead it get, just hangs over here. You then have a long stick, which is meant to keep the prey that you do catch above the ground so they don't actually grab onto the ground and try to run away in that, in that way. You've got ropes that you have used to secure the long stick to the logs. Then you've got a rope coming down. And then there is the trap mechanism. There's a loop that you formed with the rope. So anything that steps in that will hopefully now get caught. You've got sticks over here, big sticks, and then smaller sticks. And what is supposed to happen here, just keeping an eye out for danger. What's supposed to happen, and I'm just going to cut this away so that you can see. What's supposed to happen here is that if you have something walking, there are a whole bunch of sticks over here, and something walks over these sticks, that should then press down on these sticks on the side, which will release that stick, and this stick long stick now springs up closes the noose around whatever has stepped on there that's the basic design of this one at least uh, there are so many other different designs that you can also use but the replacement of this is actually relatively poor you want to funnel the creatures into your trap so what you would usually use this right over here seems to be a game trail you'd actually put your trap over here somewhere between these two bushes you'll have animals walking along here and then you'll pack branches on the side over here and on the side, side over here just to make sure they don't actually wander off their trail a bit at the point where you've got your trap. You will then put the logs over here. So let me just actually show how you would go about putting that. Right, so you would actually put it more like this. In this trail over here, you'll put a whole bunch of branches on this side over here and a whole bunch of branches on this side over here using natural landforms like rocks and uh, trees or plants to make sure that you, the animals automatically 
will be walking towards your trap. Well, as soon as they then walk over these little sticks, releases the mechanism which allows the the long stick that has been, been bent down. That is under tension. That springs up and the noose closes around the foot, hopefully, of whatever has triggered it. And that's the basic design of this snare that you could now use. And you could then use that to catch prey animals, uh, whether that's uh, peccaries in this case, or tapirs, or humans, to, you know, keep your base safe. Uh, we are, speaking of bases safe, we are just going to go into this cave over here. We just want a safer spot to end our session. We don't want a dangerous environment to be in, so let's just quickly come into this cave here. And keep an eye out for scorpions. There's one in the corner over here. You're going into dark places. You be careful. There can be things like scorpions hiding there as well. Right, so I am just going to quickly build a little small camp for myself. Or basically just a bed for myself. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it down here. Right over there. Now, you do not want to just lie on the ground. In fact, in fact, just dumping a whole bunch of palm leaves on the ground is not going to be very useful in real life. You want to have a more raised uh, thing, uh, a raised bed of some sort for you to lie on. So let's just carry these palm leaves down and then we should be able to just sleep there and regain our strength. Now, of course, this is really not well to some extent it's a good place to actually have your your bed in another way it's actually quite bad good way is no, nothing can get up from this side okay you are quite safe maybe some things will climb down from up there main way of in, main attack way is right over here along this cave network over here now you can of course if in real life block this off to either make it look like there's nobody on this side of the cave or to just prevent people from gaining access easily to your little bed over here. And while we are here, let's just also, while it is raining, throw out our coconut bowls on our head, apparently, just so that we can get water as well as it rains. And that is going to be it. Thank you all for joining me on today's episode. We learned a little bit about plants to use as bandages in this game and why you would want to use it. Uh, we'll delve into it as we go along a little bit more. We, so we are quite all right in terms of medication for now. We've got our tobacco dressings for, in this case, venom wounds. But please do not rely on that if you do get bitten by a snake or a scorpion or a spider. We'll talk about what to do in those cases uh, next time or another time. We have lily dressing over here from the plantain lily, which has antihistamine properties in this game at least. So this is going to help us if we suffer allergic reactions. And then you can make normal bandages from the Molinaria leaf just as a way to uh, survive, uh, just to, to bandage your wounds. So we've got lots of meat over here as well. We've got some maggots wriggling around as well, painkillers, which we picked up. And we are going to be quite all right in terms of survival. So thank you again for joining me on this for this episode. I should be back again next week as well with another episode of Let's Play Green Hell. And then the week thereafter, we are going to see what we start playing then. Uh, but so stay tuned, stay safe, and I will see you guys next time.